Hey guys, my name is Darkwater Killer, and today I'll be doing the first of a two-part series in which I show you how to make potions with custom effects in Minecraft using data packs. This series was suggested by user Promic2 on the Discord server. If you want to suggest something for me to make, consider joining the Discord server or just leave your suggestion in the comments below. Anyway, let's get into it. As I've said, this is the first of two videos. In this video, we will be setting up our data pack from scratch, creating our tick functions, and setting up our in-world crafting. So, first, I'm going to go to Visual Studio Code and press File, Open Folder. Now, I'm going to navigate to the world in which we're developing the data pack. So, in this instance, I'm using a world called Custom Potions Data Pack. I'm going to go into data packs and just make a new folder and give this folder uh, whatever name you want. This can be anything that's valid for a folder name in your operating system and will be the name you reference your pack with when you want to enable or disable it. Also, while I just said you can name it anything, you probably shouldn't name it Minecraft and in general should avoid using words that are reserved in most programming languages. So I'm just going to call this custom potions. And go ahead and just navigate into that and press select folder down in the bottom right hand corner. You should notice that once VS Code opens up the folder, it might show you the welcome page and you can just go ahead and close that page and shift your attention over to the file tree to the left. As you can see, the tree is currently empty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, click on new folder, and this folder is gonna be named data. Next to the data folder, you also want to create a new file. And this file is going to be named pack.mcmeta. Open the pack file and type the following information in. So we're going to open some braces. We're going to type pack. Open more braces. The autocomplete is not being friendly right now pack format and type in the number one and description and I'm just going to say created by Darkwater Killer in a YouTube tutorial series and go ahead and save that. So the pack format tag right here can be any integer number because it's currently not being enforced by Mojang as to what the number means. For simplicity's sake, you're generally going to make this value one. However, this may possibly change in future versions of the game. We now have the bare minimum for the game to recognize our pack as a valid data pack. If you want to check and make sure you did it right, go to Minecraft and load up the world that you're developing the pack in. So I currently have uh, that world open. And once you've loaded up, go ahead and type in the command slash data pack list. And if your pack doesn't show up, try typing reload and type in data pack list again. So if your pack still doesn't show up, um, so if you don't see vanilla and then the name that you gave the folder earlier, if it still doesn't show up, then you probably have an error in your pack.mc meta file. Um, that could be anywhere from unbalanced brackets to the extension that you gave um, wasn't .mc meta, so you may have made a typo there. In the event that happens, just uh, go back and try making the pack file again. So next we need to create our tick functions. So inside the data folder, go ahead and create two more folders. The 
first one we're going to name Minecraft. And the second one we are going to name um, anything that you like. Um, but keep in mind that the naming for this second folder is a little more restricted than the last folder that you named. Um, so you should avoid using any symbols, um, spaces, and capital letters. And once again, avoid using any words that are commonly reserved in most programming languages. So I'm just going to call this one CP. Okay, so um, previously I had an issue where the data folder was messing up and it did something like this. So all you really need to do is go ahead and inside data, drag the two folders out like you just saw me do. And then you can put into data, just drag each one individually over the name and it should insert the folders both into the data folder um, separately from each other. Anyways, inside this Minecraft folder, we're going to make another folder and this one is going to be called tags. And inside this tags folder, we are going to create a folder called functions. Okay, and inside this functions folder, we're going to make two files, the first of which we are going to call tick.json. And the second one will be called load.json. So inside the tick file, you're going to open up a root tag and then make a tag called replace and set that to false. And then after that, you're going to make a list tag called values. And you're just going to save it like this and just go ahead and select all of this and paste it into your load.json as well. And while we are in the load file, we're going to add a string value into this values list. And this is just going to be the namespace that you gave your other folder, a colon and load. So in my case, it's going to be CP load. Now you can close the load file and back over in the tick.json file, we're going to do a similar thing by adding a similar value, but instead of saying load, we're going to say tick. And now we are done with these two files and you can close the tick one as well. And what we just did was set up our data pack so that every time it gets loaded or reloaded, it will run a function called load that we will define in our data pack. And every game tick, it will run a function called tick, which also will be defined in our data pack. However, in order for those things to work, we need to make those functions. So in your other folder, create a new folder and call it functions. And inside of this functions folder, we're going to make a new file called tick.mc function and another one called load.mc function. All we're going to put in the load function is a tell raw command that simply alerts us to when the pack is finished loading and all you need to do for that is type in tell raw all players and text loaded custom potions. And I'm just going to make this a color of aqua to make it easier to see. And you can go ahead and save that and close the load MC function file. Next, we'll be creating our in-world crafting recipe for a potion. So each potion you create will need to have its own recipe function. 
the potion I will be creating in this series is one that summons lightning wherever it lands. So with our tick function open, we're just going to add the line function cp check crafting. And we also need to create a new file with the name of check crafting dot mc function. Now, before getting into our crafting recipe, I want to give a short explanation why I'm using this method. So as of right now, making custom brewing recipes is not possible and traditional crafting recipes do not support crafting items with custom NBT data. This is when you're creating new recipes through data packs. Most people will use a method where they make a recipe for a spawn egg and instantly replace that egg when it's in a player's inventory and they will retexture the spawn egg using a resource pack. Now I just like using that method because it removes your ability to use a spawn egg and it also requires more than one function to do versus the method I use of in-world crafting can be done using a single command and doesn't involve checking inventories constantly. Anyway, in the check crafting function, we're going to add just one line. Um, however, this line is going to be quite a long amount of text, but it is as follows. So you're going to execute as all entities with a type of item and nbt data of item id of minecraft lingering potion and count um, of 1b with the tag of potion minecraft water and I'm just going to space these out to make it easier to look at and we're going to do that at that selected entity only if the entity is near another item with the nbt of item minecraft redstone block and a count of one. And also um, this entity has to be within a distance of one block so that's checking if there is a redstone block within one block thrown onto the ground nearby a lingering potion. And additionally, we're also going to check just about the same thing. So I'm just going to if entity. Okay, and paste that. But instead of checking for another redstone block, we're going to check for a glowstone block. So change the ID for the second entity selector, change that ID to just glowstone. And so if there is a redstone block and a block of glowstone thrown on the ground next to a lingering potion of just water, we are going to run function cp summon lightning 
potion. And you can go ahead and save that. Now, after that, you can create yet another function, and this one is going to be called summon lightning potion dot mc function. And in this new function, you'll want to type the following lines. So we're going to kill all entities of type item within a distance of 0 to 1 blocks and nbt data of item id redstone block and a count of 1. And we're also going to limit this to just 1. Okay, so we can go ahead and copy that line and paste it on the next one, and instead of redstone block here, we can just replace that with glowstone. And go ahead and add another line where you make the entity that is running this, so this is going to be run by the lingering potion that was thrown on the ground, and you can go ahead and just make it uh, kill itself. So that removes the three items from the ground before finally summoning a new item. It's going to be summoned at the location that that was at. And it's going to have the data of item ID Minecraft Lingering Potion Count 1P Tag of Display and we're going to give this lore that just says zap and a name of text lightning bottle. Okay, and that is it for this function right now. So um, the important part about this is the lore tag in the summon command, and that's because we will be using it to check if a thrown lingering potion is one of our custom potions that we create in this data pack, or if it was just simply a lingering potion renamed by the player, because you can rename any potion to lightning bottle and chuck it, but you can't change the lore tag in a vanilla survival. So we'll be using this lore tag to check to see if the thrown potion is a legitimate potion that was created in this data pack. If we head over to the world that I have this pack loaded into, we can now test our crafting system. And so I'm just going to reload the data pack. Okay, and as you can see, it says that our data pack has been loaded um, in the chat. And so now that it's done reloading, um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my ingredients. So we need block glowstone, block of redstone, and a regular lingering water bottle. And if I throw them onto the ground, you will see that a potion called lightning bottle with a lore tag of zap is summoned and the three items that I've thrown on the ground have been deleted out of existence. So this is like the potion that we'll be using.
And um, there's just one last thing that I want to do for this data pack. So the one thing that I just want to do for looks and like special effects just to polish up the data pack a little bit more is we're going to add a particle effect and a sound when a potion is crafted. And so to do that, I'm just going to add two lines to the summon function for the potion. So the first command that I'm adding to this function is just particle Minecraft poof. It's going to be at that location and the spread on that is going to be zero. The particle speed is going to be not 0.125 and we're just going to make it summon 10 particles. And the second line is going to be a play sound of Minecraft entity. It should be Minecraft colon entity dot generic dot extinguish fire. And we're going to play that on the block channel. Um, just so um, it gives a certain channel where you can reduce the sound of the potion crafting if it's too loud for some reason. And we're going to play that for all entities that are within a distance of zero to five blocks. And we're going to play it at that source. We're going to give it a volume of one and we're going to play it with a pitch of 0.7. Okay, so we're currently done with this summon lightning potion function. So you can go ahead and close that. And so one last time, we're gonna go into the world and we're just going to reload, wait for that message to pop up and go ahead and craft another potion. And you'll notice now that whenever I craft a potion, it has a particle effect and it plays a sound. And that will happen each time, as you can see again. It creates our potion and does the fancy effects. It's This part is mainly for looks. It's not actually necessary. Um, so if you just want to keep your pack and custom potions to be just um, utility and have no like extra polish to it. You don't actually have to add those particle and uh, play sound commands. You can stop at the fourth line in the summon function that summons the item. And that's the end of part one for this series. The second part of the series will be out soon. So subscribe if you don't want to miss it. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Darkwater Killer, and I hope you have an amazing day.